Hey, GED students, super excited to go over this word problem here that uh, involves skills that you'll want for your science test. And you might say, there's word problems on the science test. Yep, <laughs> scientists use math, guys. And so for our science test, we're gonna have to use some math. Um, just want to thank here Shu Ma Nyai. She's a student in my free GED prep from Light and Salt Learning Facebook group. She posted this one up in the group wanting some help from it. It is from my GED math crash course, the data analysis unit. So data analysis is a type of map that you see uh, most often in science. And it's from the probability lesson, but it is experience level practice. So it looks a little tricky, but the good news is this one's actually simpler than it, simpler than it seems. I also did want to thank the last three donors to uh, get me give a donation on Buy Me a Coffee. Um, Debbie, Miriam, and Dina, thank you so much for the coffee. You guys are the ones who enable me to do what I do. Without generous donors like you guys, I wouldn't be able to continue making free quality resources for struggling GED students. Okay, all that being said, let's go ahead and tackle this problem. Let's just read through first. And as we read through, what we're really doing is looking for what we're supposed to do. That's what I'm. my first goal is always like, what am I supposed to do? Okay, let's read. John's sock drawer contains 10 pairs of black socks, 15 pairs of white socks, and five pairs of striped socks. Okay, that's nifty info, but it doesn't tell me what to do. John reaches into the drawer and grabs a pair of socks at random, and they are white. Okay, yeah, we're still watching John. <laughs> John then reaches into the drawer and draws out another pair, and they are striped. Just a whole lot of information about John. Still no clue of what I'm supposed to do. But look here at the next sentence. What are the chances? Now they're asking me a question. Now I've got some idea what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be finding the chances that if John reaches into the drawer and randomly draws out a third pair, they will be black. So what are the chances that John reaches in, gets some black socks after all this? And that's what I'm finding. And um, that phrase, what are the chances? Um, another way of saying that there is what is the probability? Now there's a couple of different ways to express probability. Um, probably usually you're going to see it expressed, especially on the GED, as either a fraction or a percent. You know, we can convert back and forth between fractions and percents that are equivalent, that are equal. And so we could give our answer as either. But I want to assure you guys, and I know you will struggle to believe me because you guys are so scared of fractions, that the easier way to go in the vast majority of probability problems is to start with the fraction. I promise, I promise you, it's so much simpler. And there's a reason for that, because a fraction bar can be read as the phrase out of. Like for example, two thirds, one way to think about two thirds, like you probably had in your elementary school classrooms, these little diagrams. If I say I have two thirds of a pizza, I'm saying I have two out of three pieces. And so that's what you wanna know in probability. If I'm looking for the chances that our socks will be black, I'm looking for how many black socks there are out of total socks. And so really easy, all I have to then do is find out how many black socks, find out how many total socks, I have my fraction, and, and, and I've written a ratio. I mean, like, it's that simple. Um, so let's go ahead then and find this information. We need to know how many black socks. We need to know how many total socks. Now we need to go back and check out all John's sock activities. Let's see. John's sock drawer contains, oh, there's my first piece of inf information, 10 pairs of black socks. So I'll write that down, 10 black I like to keep track of it with these longer word problems because sometimes we're going to see the information change and that's exactly what we're going to see here with John. And then we have 15 pairs of white socks. And then it says that we have, let's see, five pairs of striped socks. Now, if that was all that was going on, we would just go ahead and figure out our probability. But before we ever figure out our probability, this is John drawing out a third pair. He draws out a few other pairs first. 
Now, a lot of students would freak out. Oh my gosh, it's compound probability. We're finding the chances of three events happening and think this is a really complicated problem, but it's not actually, we're not finding the probability of three things happening. We're just looking at the third thing, you know, when he draws out the third pair that they're going to be black. So you say, well, what about these other two things? Well, they're events that already happened. So let's account for them in our sock drawer. I'll show you what I mean. John reaches into the drawer and grabs a pair of socks at random and they are white. Guys, he already reached in. We're not looking for the future possibility of him doing this. He already reached in, grabbed this pair of socks and they're white. So you know what's going to happen? His sock drawer totals that we've written down here are going to change. There aren't 15 white socks anymore. Now we have only 14. One of them's gone. John took one out. Same thing in that next sentence. You know, John then reaches into the drawer and draws out another pair and they are striped. You know, we won't have five pairs of striped socks anymore. Now we're going to have four. And now that we've accounted for the changes of John's two actions, how they affected his sock drawer, now we can easily find the probability of this third event happening, uh, this drawing out of a black socks by doing how many black socks I have over how many total socks I have. So let's take a look at our numbers. John hasn't drawn out any black socks yet, so that hasn't changed. We still have 10 black socks. But, you know, the other numbers have changed, so our total is a little different than it used to be, but that's okay. Easy enough to find this total. We'll just add up how many black socks, how many white socks, and how many striped socks we have. So let's see, 10 and 14 is 24, plus another 4 is 28 total socks. And if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I can't do all this math by hand when this word problem is so hard, Kate, you'd have a calculator. Even on your science test, you'd have a calculator. So by all means, add in your calculator so we can devote our brain real estate to this hard interpreting word problems actions that we're doing. So I have 10 out of 28 socks or black socks. That's the probability that he reaches in and grabs a pair of black socks. Now, this is a correct answer. There is nothing wrong with this answer. It's totally true. It's totally right. However, it would not be the way that a mathematician would write the answer. And you might say, yeah, I have to turn it into a percent. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, okay, guys, if there's multiple choice answers and the multiple choice answers are in percents, by all means, convert it into a percent. And that's easy enough to do because you have a convert to percent button in your calculator. So I'll just write it up here at the top. So if the multiple choice answers were percents, okay, and you wanted to get a percent answer, all you'd have to do with this 10 over 28 is type it into your calculator using that N over D button. So 10 N over D 28. And then you're going to do the convert to percent button. And the convert to percent button is written in green. Um, and so anytime you want something written in green, you have to hit that green second button. So you'll hit the second and then convert to percent looks like this a little arrow with a little percent sign. And there you go. It'll convert it to a percent for you. So you don't have to. But honestly, the likelihood is, guys, in your on your GED2, you're. It's written by a mathematician. Let me just put it that way. And mathematicians like perfect numbers. Um, if you try to convert this into a percent, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be something you have to round. It's going to be an ugly decimal. Most mathematicians would prefer a nice, neat fraction to an ugly decimal that needs to be rounded. So the likelihood is the answer is going to be a fraction. But do remember that all final fraction answers should be reduced to lowest terms. Let's say that again. All final fraction answers should be reduced to lowest terms. Now, some of you guys are panicking right here. You're going, Kate, I never learned how to reduce fractions. In fact, Kate, you're a jerk. You don't even have anything about reducing fractions on the crash course. Do you hate me? And I say, no, I don't hate you. There are skills that you can do in your calculator. And the reason why I want you to do them in your calculator is because we need to focus on what's most important in this problem, which is interpreting the word problem. It's a challenging one. So. If you want to reduce this in your calculator, our final answer here is going to be a fraction. Again, we're going to type it into our calculator using that fraction button. So 10 N over D 28. And the nice thing is your calculator knows that all final fraction answers are supposed to be reduced. You just press enter and guess what it's going to do? 
it's going to reduce it. And you will see that your final answer here then is five out of 14. What are the chances that you reach into the sock drawer and you get black socks? It's five out of 14. Now you can stop right here if you'd like. But for those of you who are like, Kate, I don't want a calculator. I want a challenge. 10 and 28 are both even numbers, meaning they both have a factor of two. All even numbers can divide by two. I divide any common factors out of the fraction to reduce it to lowest terms. 10 divided by two is five. 28 divided by two is 14. You would get to the same answer. Wow. Okay. So probably the easiest part of this was finding the probability. And then we have some calculator skills going on, but pretty simple, not as hard as it looks. So breathe through it, guys. Now, if a problem like this is freaking you out, you're going, oh my gosh, there's so much. I feel so overwhelmed. You know, just guess at an answer, flag it and come back to you when, or come back to it, I should say. When the clock is ticking, it's really hard to think straight. But when you come back to something and you know you've answered the other questions, you're feeling pretty good, you know you got some of them right, and now you have some time to really think about this and consider it, you'll be calmer, more likely to be able to use the reasoning skills we needed in order to complete this problem. All right, so if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to go ahead, drop it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer it. You might make my next vid. And I just want to say to you guys that you can do this, okay? You can pass the math. You can pass the science. It's almost never as hard as it seems. So happy learning.